Spark of Humanity, a production of Spark of Humanity Network. Today we're talking about wounds. Uh, I'm sure everybody can relate to wounds. I know I can. My name's Maura Quinn. This is Martha Holden. She'll be our guide today and always. And uh, this is Ann Wade. And uh, right now we're going to talk about wounds and how you can use your spark. And the spark of humanity is, you want to go? We, everybody, everybody, every human being has a spark of humanity. Everyone you meet, everyone you think of has a spark of humanity. Sometimes we're afraid our spark might be damaged. We're afraid it might be put out, but it can't be. The spark is unextinguishable, if that's a word. And, but our sparks can be defended. As point of illustration. This is what it looks like, a spark, def spark is defended. Your spark may be baffled. I like to think of these little lines as being like a funhouse mirror that's been broken and it's sort of like shard so you're not getting an accurate reflection. Shattered. Yeah. Shattered, that's right, shattered. And the spark can be baffled. Kind of like being in a fog. And sometimes, I think, at least for me, to some extent always, all three defended, distorted, and baffled. And sometimes so much we're not even aware that we have a spark. But we always do. And the... Um, and the reason we're talking about this is that it offers a way to talk about emotional things that get in the way of our using, claiming our spark of humanity and using it to connect with the spark in someone else, which can strengthen their spark and transform their lives. This is people we like and care about as well as people we don't like. We all can use some transformation. So the wounds, hmm. I don't know why we use that word, but it's just, it's a word, um, or what happens to things that hurt, and in response to the things that have hurt us, we feel baffled. Our bafflement, why are they treating me like this? The moment we slide out from the womb, what are these like, what's going on here? And there's a bafflement, so how do I make myself safe? How do I gather a sense of security? So how do I change how I act so that I can feel safe? Yes, would, I mean, uh, w would you describe uh, wounds as like suffering? If there's suffering and then there's the transformation of suffering and the spark of humanity can help you in claiming your spark of humanity, recognizing another spark of humanity so that you don't just want to explode uh, recognizing their spark of humanity no matter how much they might drive you nuts or just really hurt you, mm -hmm. hurt your very foundation. Mm -hmm. I was saying to Martha that this week uh, Senator John McCain died and I like John McCain. I think he lost his way at a certain point but I did and the disrespect that I felt that came from our president uh, and the presidency is an office that I, I respect the presidency of the United States but this person that occupies the seat of the presidency right now, I was so angry and hurt and disgusted. And I was talking to Martha about it. Uh, I guess it was Sunday night. And I said, I was aware that I needed to claim my spark of humanity so that I didn't get just lost in that anger and that mm. upset. And it helps me to find a way to find serenity, I guess, or, or find a, a, a a, a balance, maybe, because center, I, I felt a center. To center. Yeah, because I felt so off and so angry, and it brought back uh, after the election, and it brought back during the campaign, and the disrespect that I felt that was shown uh, by that fellow, and uh, and yet then he wins the presidency, and uh, all of that upset and disbelief, that bafflement, that distortion of how can this be and that defensive of you know I, I don't oh, I don't know 
So how, how do I claim my spark there? How do I use this spark of humanity to help me center myself, to help me feel okay? It's, we've got a few minutes, which is good, because this is nothing, <laughs> nothing that I can answer quickly or easily, so it's a matter okay. of teasing it apart, okay. teasing the situation apart, using it sort of as a case study. Um, does this, do you resonate with this, Anne? Yes, okay. I do. I mean, at first mm -hmm. I, was, I was so upset. I'm, I, I thought that the president obviously doesn't have a spark, but then I was, everybody has a spark, no matter how right. defended, defended, distorted, distorded or baffled, or baffled, baffled they are. The spark <laughs> is there. And so yeah. this is this knowing is good. that when so I'm going to see whether we can tease this. This is good. Apart. This is good. Gradually, because this is this this defended, distorted, baffled is a model that just came up in doing the Spark video and the Spark booklet. And you know maybe it doesn't work. Maybe it falls apart. It's a model. We're trying it out. We're seeing whether it works. The nice thing it about does it work. Is That's the thing. Is it, it does. The spark works, but whether you know, who knows whether the I don't know why, really but it does. The spark <laughs> definitely works. That's that's a for sure. Um, so we can start with perhaps the here's the here's the distorted, baffled, defended spark, and the thing that has interested me is that the the defense is it's always two boxes. And there's yeah. the inner box I think of as being defended against myself, mm -hmm. being defended against my feelings, um, trying to defend. I don't know, when I was a kid, I spent a lot of time telling myself in bed at night, I remember, don't do that ever again. You know, you can't do that, you can't trust that, trying to bring myself up so I'd fit into the uh -huh. family system so I'd be okay. Okay. And I was defending, trying to defend myself against my own errant actions, against my own feelings, against my just, I, I felt I needed to have an internal secret police keeping watch over me. You're looking puzzled. You did not have this experience. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm just thinking that it's because who told you it was bad? It's because somebody told you what you did, like you took, you took your sister's the you know you took the icing off the t my brother that did this to me he took I had a hostess cupcake and I took off the, the the icing to save it for last and 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 I ate the cupcake and then while I was eating the cupcake he reached across and grabbed the icing and ate it and I said hey and he said sorry Charlie and that was it now he should be told that he was wrong and he should have been wrestling with himself that night saying, oh, what a bad boy I am. But I don't think that he did. And that's what brings me back to Trump. Okay. Well, I'm thinking <laughs> it's like, Trump what a bad boy, but he got it. Maybe, maybe. maybe right? That, he got maybe, my icing. Maybe that night you were saying, I need to remember never to take the frosting off my cupcake well, when my brother's anywhere near. Maybe. There's that, because it's self-protection. It's not, we can't change anybody else except by engaging your spark. Yeah. So it's, it's good to remember there's always a positive that we can do once we get to be willing to do it. But it's hard when you're really mad at somebody and yeah. really feeling they're despicable. Well, I still remember it, and I was probably 11. I'm 57 now. Um, but I love my brother very much. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I, I could talk about brothers and cupcakes, too. We're not going there. That's not what this is about. So are we... Okay, so what we want to look at is how you, your internal structure that makes it, in that situation, when you're upset about, you're already grieving because of John McCain's death. Yeah. Okay, so you're already sort of maybe off balance because of that, because you cared about him. Yes. And then the president's response is not as you wish it had been. Yes. You didn't like it. That a decent human may have had. May. May. Yeah. Somebody else would say, which is something else, because someone else that was sort of a Trump fan was saying, 
oh, John McCain isn't going to invite him to his funeral. And why would she die already? They actually said that. Why oh. should? I, I wish he'd die already because he's being. This is a friend of yours. A friend of yours was saying. Yes. This. Well, not a, a relative. A relative, an in-law. Okay, saying wishing that Trump that McCain would die already. Yeah, because he was just being a bother. See, it's a trouble. It's a tough one, isn't it? No, <laughs> not not so much as it it makes me more sharply aware that um, the concept of having a spark of humanity and everyone having a spark of humanity and people being willing to do the work to get in touch with their spark mm -hmm. of humanity and use those as agents of transformation rather than being swept away by their attitudes, their anger, their upset. bafflement, their upset. The distortions that come on the I think this bafflement, bafflement, and then the distortion to deal with the bafflement. Um, we turn ourselves into people that we weren't created to be. We, yeah. We turn ourselves into malicious, blaming, judgmental, sharp-tongued, resentful. Thank you. Um, yeah. You know, we we turn yeah. ourselves into those people because that's how that we feel we on some level we feel we need to do that we need to become like that in order to feel safe in our families or our circumstances it's reactive rather it's, than it's responsive reactive. and it's yeah it's like i don't want to be that ugly i don't want to be that right so yeah yeah it's like ooh, it turns back on me doesn't and it and so when we're that when we're that have that <sighs> knee jerk anger hostile blaming you know, throwing it back in their face sort of thing. Um, we don't like that. It doesn't feel right, right? No. but that's where we've learned to go. And there's just so many people that are not in touch with their spark. Right. And, and because they're not in touch with it, they're just... They're living in their they're, distortion. Yeah. And yeah. then they're defending it against themselves, against the awareness that this isn't who they truly are. And they're defending against what? What do you mean? I'm not okay. I'm fine just the way I am. Yeah. I like you know. Why doesn't he die already? I'm deplorable. Or deployable. Deplorable. Deployable. <laughs> <laughs> but they're yeah. Or or that they are the way they are, and that's the way they need to be. And you know, shut up, and I don't want to hear your yeah touchy feely sparky crap. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right. Uh. Yeah. Which is. For me, because I'm a coward, um, one of the reasons no, I like I not. like the Spark of Humanity program, the <laughs> discipline, the practice, because it's some, something that the person that I'm deploying it against, mm -hmm. deploying isn't the right word, but the person that whose spark I am, enhancing. my spark is connecting with, maybe, yeah, maybe enhancing, or I'm connecting, but they are transformed from the inside without knowing it. And they ha there's no defense. Kind of like turning the, the other spark. cheek. But you don't have to do it physically. You can do it from the comfort of your living room. Um, true. And uh, without them ever knowing who did it. Yes, this is true. You know, the FBI the, and all the other su secret spook agencies, I, I don't know mm -hmm. their initials anymore. Um, there's no way that they can defend against an active, plain spark. Yeah. So it's a it's a it's a stealth weapon of peace and transformation for the person who deplo who uses it. We've discovered as well as for the person whose spark you're affirming. Because you're also uh, kind of affirming your own spark. You're right. You're 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 claiming. You're reclaiming claiming. your humanity. Your 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 spark of humanity. That's you're right. reclaiming that yeah. from. This angry person who's just being reactive and how how dare you type of a person, because nobody wants to live that way. It's miserable to live that way. But there are a lot of people who are so used to it that they don't this recognize is true. it's still miserable. Yeah. I mean, I've been. Or there. how miserable they make other people. Right. Yeah. yeah but you know, who cares about other people? <laughs> I mean, it's you know, am I miserable? But there are all the there are all the various forms of addictions 
and compensations and coping things we use so that we don't, so that we can ignore the fact that we're miserable. Yeah. You know, I mean. And don't care. We don't care, right. Right, I remember, you know, 30, 40 years ago, people were going around talking about, you're a miserable sinner. And I'd say, well, I might be a sinner, but I'm not miserable. I'm not going to admit I'm miserable. And I think that that's a defense. Mm -hmm. That's a defense against outside yeah. avoiding stimulation, denial, avoiding yeah. situations, not watching television. I just won't read the newspaper so that I won't get that, that distorted, angry part of me uh -huh. will not be triggered. But, but I think really claiming and growing and strengthening your own spark helps it to, it, it won't be triggered. You, right. there, there will come a time if, if it's, like, it's like you're practicing with it, the, the, the key to mastery is repetition. Right. And, and in time, if you, if you just keep in there, if you just keep showing up and saying, okay, you know, because it's, it's, there's, it's gonna flare. I, I, I had a, a, an encounter, I had an experience with a, a coworker, and we had, I, and I even had to, I sent her off a, a letter, and I was clear about how I felt about what had happened, and at the end of it, I said, I guess we both have a spark of humanity, and sometimes when sparks come together, they flare, and that's okay. I would not say that the spark flares, but the distortions, all those jaggedy, crunch into each other, and that's, yeah. Yeah. That's painful. Everything on the outside, yeah. All, all everything, is, everything around it. Right. Because that's yeah. all that stuff that's, that's traveling around it. It's like, what's here? There, there's a certain purity there, you right. know? There's a certain essential being to it and essence to it, and, and all the rest of it is just spinning around it, you know? It's sort of like the, the planet with the molten core is, you know, and then all this geology around it is the same sort of general model. Uh -huh. But the center is okay. And you're being awfully quiet. I'm listening, and, I, and I, I'm also thinking, like, how in practice, mm -hmm. you know, to claim your spark, yeah. um, should it be, ev it should be every day, or to be in touch to check in, um, make it a practice so I think, that yeah, you're I think practice is a good idea i i find that when i'm thinking about the day ahead which i'm usually still in bed or back in bed when i'm thinking about the day to come up i think of everybody who i'm likely to encounter mm -hmm. and i connect with my spark and connect and affirm their sparks and so it's a it's a it, it's like priming the pump, the conscious yeah. pump, mm -hmm. so that when I'm encountering people, wherever I'm encountering them, I'm, I'm engaging their spark, which is, it's a gift to me because it gets me out of my crazy head. Yeah, yeah. and more, more, more directly and more, more cleanly and without all of that spinning around. Yeah. Like when, when I was with this person the other day, mm -hmm. I, she actually came in spinning a little bit, and I just sort of sat back. And I didn't get, I didn't engage. I didn't engage because to me it seems like with the, with the, the distortion and the mm -hmm. bafflement and the defense, those are engagements. Right. I engage in defense. I engage in, in, in and that. The defense well, is so that I won't engage. So I won't feel the pain of the distortion. Yeah. So I don't have to deal with the bafflement. It's yeah, a, I'm it's upset. My feelings right. were hurt. And yeah. that's yeah. part of, like, I struggle because I, I'm, a, I'm a nurse, and part of my inability to go back into facilities, and I miss my nursing, but there's so many people that I had to work with that don't care. Uh. And it just bothered me so much that you know, it's hard to find caring people, especially in healthcare, huh. and and it was just too painful. But I didn't have, I didn't know anything about the spark then, <laughs> so maybe if I'd have known right, that, that it, I that everybody has a spark, and and I was able to get through to some of my nurses' yeah. aides, and yeah. you know, by by showing them the difference of providing care in, in, a, in a 
loving, caring manner. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I can just see how it would have been really useful for me when I was working in the nursing home. Starting the starting the shift that the the staff gets together before the shift starts, right? right? Don't you yeah, usually? and just to have the staff together go through every patient, thinking of them, connecting with the that would have spark I, that of might a, have made a huge difference of every patient on the floor. It's and so that I find it I find it useful to me because I often think that I'm fine just the way I am. Mm -hmm. We actually know better, but you know the, that's still a default of mine. Mm -hmm. So thinking that I'm, you know, if I were working for you on the floor, saying, okay, we're gonna, you know, now we're gonna focus on Mrs. McGillicuddy's spark, and now Mr. Tomasi's spark, and doing that, that activates my spark. So yes. that's yes. that's giving me a stronger position, a stronger balance to go into the shift. So yeah, that, that yeah. could work. I'm thinking of particularly in, in the nursing th that you say they don't care, but I'm sure they do, but along the way, your defenses had to, because yes. I know when I was in news, I could not do my job and engage as a human sometimes as, as how I would normally feel if it was just like, oh, something happened to you. I'd be like, oh, Martha, are you okay? Mm. I can't do that right now. I have to think about getting the truck someplace or getting a satellite someplace or having some time or what or getting a reporter there or whatever or for, for for the nursing people they need to think about I need to make sure this is taken care of that is taken care of and sometimes it's it's got to be especially emotional you and know this, is, these people are so vulnerable and burnout. if you let your vulnerability come out you can't do your job yeah and there, there is there is and maybe burnout we would use that term but sure I think it's it's not just in nursing. It's no, like it's I not. think people right. are are burnt out on uh, so many different things. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My my suspicion. I don't know because, as I said, we're just exploring these concepts. And the spark. Yeah. But okay. If, right. Because <laughs> if if my spark is fed, if I'm making sure, and that's my my sense of how I strengthen uh -huh. my spark. So that it's willing to engage the difficult people, so it has the strength. Yes. Right. Right. My my sensation is that my spark has roots. People say sparks don't have roots, but my spark feels like it has roots <sighs> to to pull in the nutrients that it needs to make mm -hmm. the connections it need needs to pull in the wisdom and the strength and develop the community to be able to be a strong resilient spark and then mm -hmm. if I'm taking care of that mm -hmm. then I think there's no burnout although there can come a time when my spark is saying this is good I'm strong I'm resilient I'm connected I have community it's yeah. time to get another job you know it doesn't mean that you have to stay there forever right right but you know to leave because you just know that it's time to go because sometimes it's just time to go yeah. right but if, if you do strengthen your own spark, right. and you are in that position of care, whatever you're, you're, you're mm -hmm. doing, if you do strengthen and, and claim your own spark, mm -hmm. it helps, like you say, it really does help bring, bring it forward. And there's, there's, sometimes there can be a person in a place, and they're dealing with the same craziness that you're dealing with, and yet they seem to be okay. And there always seems to be something yeah. calming about them. And that helps to calm me because I think, okay, okay, the world's not ending. You know, I'm not going to lose my. It's 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 going to yeah. be okay. I, I mean, I remember when when I was when I was new in in the business and everything seemed to go wrong. And I remember calling back and and I thought I was just going to get chewed out like crazy and that was it. I was done. And I was just told, come on home. And it gave me such a shock because normally this person wasn't the one to say, just come on home. But I think they knew that I had given my all to it. And sometimes things don't work out. Sometimes bad things happen. And that that's just life. Right. Yeah. So yeah. taking care of yourself. Right. Taking care of your spark and claiming it. And, and by, by paying attention to my spark, I'm less likely to be um, k 
kidnapped or held hostage by my stories up here. Yes. And my ideas and the, oh, ain't it awful, or what's going to happen, or, you know, they're going to get me this time. Yeah, so you'd, you'd go crazy, too, if you yeah. went through what I went through. Right, because I, I find that I have a tendency to narrate my life, <laughs> and it's, it's never a good thing. It really isn't. I mean, it's always I'm looking for, you know, getting some emotional feedback here, some emotional goody, and that, that's a, one of the ways that my inner defenses are trying to sort of make it seem okay and make every sort of normalize things and make it, make it, but actually it's better for me to be working with my spark and becoming aware of the distortions and lessening the bafflement and accepting. Acceptance uh -huh. is a great yeah. tool for dealing with yeah. bafflement, you know, just this is the way it is. I don't need to figure it out. I don't need to wonder why this person responds this way. Yeah. They, they are baffled, they are distorted, yeah. and they have defenses, and it happened. It can't unhappen. <coughs> and I'm going to take. I, I, I can take action going forward, but I can't recreate. You know, I can't right. change. And I can the claim past. my spark, right. and I can connect with their spark, and know that that's something constructive. To have a constructive point of engagement in a situation that's painful and scary is liberating. Yeah. Yeah. It's like guy, that guy you could never stand to work with, and then you had to come together in something, and you're like, oh, I guess maybe we can go for I mean, get, we can do this together. It, right, yeah. Which is, you know, sometimes it's, the world w works in strange ways. I mean, there's all sorts of paradoxes in play, and, but you kind of need them. It's like you need uncertainty and certainty. You need to feel significant and connected at the same time. You know, it's, it's just crazy. Just keep on doing it. Just keep claiming the spark and going. So we've got about a minute left. Who's got something to say or a question or something? Uh, oh, this has been good. Well, I just, I mean, as, as there. about the president? Yeah, well, yeah. I, yeah, actually, yes. And I mean, I mean, okay there. about your response? Yeah. Realizing that, but, that I mean, I'm going to have a flare-up. It's okay. Right. That's my initial reflex. Mm -hmm. But I don't have to take actions to continue the upset and the hurt. I can focus right. on what I can focus on that can bring that can bring some of what I'm looking for. It's yes. like you need to be the change you're looking for. Right, right. And if I can, if I can be, acknowledge my spark, acknowledge that there's a spark of humanity there, and try to grow it and strengthen it, maybe I can help be the change that I want to see in the world. And that could be, that sounds good. There you go. That sounds I think good. We don't need anything more than that, right? No. All right. Change the well, world. thanks for joining <laughs> us, and uh, come back later. Ciao. Done. Done. Good Done. timing. Yay! <laughs> good timing. <laughs>